Hey everybody, Shir Friedman here at Supermeats Facilities in Israel. Lately, the regulatory authorities have been raising their interest in the subject of cultured meat. So I invited a regulatory expert for a chat on the matter to give everybody a glimpse at what's been going on. So I'm here with Beth Loberant, super meats regulation expert with over 30 years of experience in tissue culture, agriculture, and food and meat regulation. We are here to discuss the recent joint meeting held in the States by the USDA and the FDA regarding cultured meat and about the states of regulation of cultured meat today. Beth, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Stay tuned to see the questions you had for Beth at the end of this video. So Beth, why does food even need to be regulated in the first place? Processed foods, meat, dried foods, were often unfit for human consumption. Additionally, in the food supply chain, a lot of people make mistakes, cut corners, maybe they don't give all the information they should. Regulation allows us to either prevent the problems or if they happen to control them. And can you tell us a little bit about the differences between the USDA and the FDA when it comes to the regulation of food? The FDA, which is the US Food and Drug Administration, regulates almost all the food, both domestic and imported, in the United States. The US Department of Agriculture, the USDA, and its Food Safety and Inspection Agency are responsible for regulating and inspecting all of the meat and egg products in the States and some fish. The two agencies work very collaboratively and there's a high level of harmonization in their regulations, directive, guidance, and inspection. And what brought these two agencies to talk about culture beat right now? For the last about two years, the amount of development work and the number of companies in cultured meat have grown exponentially. Clean meat started out as a small, nice idea, and now it's, it's a huge developmental project. All of the stakeholders, including these companies and the conventional meat industry, have pushed the agencies to come forward with programs for these uh, products. So what was decided? Who will regulate uh, culture meat? Ah, that's a big question. No one knows yet. Mm -hmm. There are absolutely good reasons on all sides, whether it's the FDA with a lot of expertise and experience in regulating biotechnological processes in the pharmaceutical industry, the food industry, or whether it's the USDA with an incredibly robust history and level of expertise in regulating meat and meat processing, or whether it's the two of them together sharing their expertise and collaborating and complementing each other. So it might be a combination of both? It very well could be. And is it safe to say that they could regulate culture meat under existing regulatory frameworks? There was stated by the companies and by the agencies that they would probably be able to work under existing frameworks. And it's good to point out, and I will quote what Scott Gottlieb, who is the FDA director, said in the meeting. There is no question that the FDA and the USDA have the necessary tools for regulating these products. Now, I wouldn't rule out that in the coming years, there will be an emergence of new technologies and therefore a need possibly for new regulatory tools. But for the moment, there seems to be no doubt among the producers, the critics, or the agencies that they are capable of undertaking this task. And is it even in the best interest of cultured meat companies to be regulated in the first place? The short answer is yes, it's the law. And it's in the interest of companies to be in compliance with the regulations and guidance and inspection of their products. Additionally, the companies are selling their products to customers and having the proper regulation and abiding by the regulations gives the consumer the confidence to buy and enjoy the products. So it is our way of telling consumers out there this product has been approved to be safe and nutritious. Yes, this is a safe, wholesome and nutritious food if it has complied with the regulation. On the second day of the meeting, the subject of the antibiotics came up. How do the regulatory agencies deal with regulating the use of antibiotics in food? In the food industry, antimicrobial agents are frequently used to deal with both environmental contaminants and contamination that may appear in or on food and food contact surfaces. The main issues with this that the regulatory agencies are interested in is what antimicrobials are being used, in what concentrations they're being applied, when are they being applied in the food chain. They are limited and monitored 
and controlled. And what is the stand of cultured meat companies when it comes to use of antibiotics? The cultured meat companies are stating that they do not use antibiotics, that they have no antibiotics in their protocols. And at least one company stated that if and when they used antibiotics, it's only in the very early stages of the developmental lab production of their products. And by the way, there in the food industry and the biotech industry and the pharmaceutical industry, there are antibiotic-free production lines today. So it's already been shown that you can grow cells in meth without using any antibiotics? That's correct. And how does the regulatory process of culture meat occurring in the States right now affecting such processes from other parts of the world? Well, the FDA and the USDA are among the major and most respected regulatory agencies for food in the world. They and a few others have always done the heavy lifting for creating frameworks for producing safe and wholesome and nutritious food around the world. At the present, we're not really aware of uh, public programming being done for clean meat, for regulation in other places. However, we are sure that they're watching very carefully at what's happening in the United States because this will affect what goes on in the whole world. These agencies uh, collaborate and they attempt at the best way possible to harmonize their programs. So ultimately, we will see a well-integrated regulatory program. What would be the next steps regulatory-wise when it comes to cultured meat? Right now, this, all of the stakeholders are offering their comments on the meeting, joint meeting that just took place. After that, we would think about the meat processing stages, but the, these stages for both conventional meat and clean meat products will be almost identical. It seems like we're definitely on the right track. Absolutely. Now let's take a few questions from Twitter. Uri Flader wants to know, is it true that cell cultured meat production is similar to yeast production? And if so, is it safe to say that the FDA could regulate it using existing regulatory infrastructures? Much of the existing regulatory framework for biotechnologically produced foods, biologics, pharmaceuticals, are appropriate for clean meat culture. So I think that these can be well adapted to clean meat culture. And Uri actually brought up a good point. The production of yeast is also the production, the mass production of cells. So this is not a novel concept. Cell cultured food is already being consumed all that's, around the world. That's correct. This is not novel. These processes and the regulations for them have been existing for many years. Also, Carl wants to know, the USDA mentioned in the meeting that its mission is to do right and feed everyone. Do you believe that clean meat meets this standard? Clean meat is wishing to add an alternative meat product to the marketplace. And it's offering the potential for doing right by feeding an ever hungry world. So I think the future is, is very bright. Beth, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me.